So in any case, uh, our friend here, Mr. Uh, Beecher, again, is speaking out. And that was a, a, uh, an, an idea that dominated the, the period of time. But something happened. The Civil War happened. The Civil War was a terrible time. And when people came back after, uh, after the Civil War and tried to get back to normal, they decided, what's wrong with having a little bit of fun? Having fun for fun's sake. Uh, how can it be sinful? Uh, life is short, life was hard, and why not enjoy it if you could? So what we want to do is talk a little bit tonight about those amusement parks that gave us some of that joy, if you like. Before we start talking about the, uh, the parks, we're going to play a little song for you, and I'd like you to listen to the words. In 1907, Luna Park, which was an amusement park down in Brooklyn, hired uh, John Philip Sousa to write what they call the summer song. And Sousa wrote a song which is called I Made My Plans for the Summer. And listen to the words of this song in any case because it, it's actually, it's actually tongue in shape, but it's a, it's a good place to start. If I were that guy, I'd look for another girl. <laughs> uh, 
Okay. <laughs> She's more interested in writing, shooting the shoots, and listening to Suze's band, of course. He wrote the, he wrote the song. Band concerts were a big part of most of these, um, uh, and most amusement parks. And Suze's band, of course, if you could afford it, was the big band. When they talk about the big band, they're not talking about Tommy Dorsey. They're talking about Suze's band with 100 pieces in it. And concert band music was very, very popular. Uh, and, and so, again, it was an important part of the park. So in any case, Sousa does this with a little bit of tongue in cheek, of course. Uh, Sousa was a man who never smiled, but inside he was laughing all the time, I think. He was a rather interesting character. So we'll go to Rocky Point, which is the oldest park. And um, again, 1851, 1851, a <clears throat> steamboat captain purchased land on Warwick Neck. And what, act, what they actually did, did was, by 1860, the land was owned by the steamship company, and they had the idea of opening this park. Most of these parks opened up more as a picnic road and things. Sometimes all they had was a short dinner hall, and then they would add rides later on. The rides came primarily in the 18, sort of in the 1890s, Carousels usually being the first ride, and eventually they get into other rides. They had the chutes, which was very popular. If you go to Canopy Lake, they still have the chutes at Canopy Lake, by the way, which if you haven't been there, it's a real old-fashioned park. And uh, there aren't many of those left, and it's managed to survive in an era where they're not really all that popular anymore. Uh, of course, a, a, a <clears throat> Ferris wheel, and again, the, the it's a busy place all of the time, and you see the, the boardwalk. Um, <clears throat> one of the first things they put up at Rocky Point was the Clambake Pavilion. This is the Clambake Pavilion. The 1938 hurricane took this out. They rebuilt it, and the 1954 hurricane took that one out. And they built it again. <laughs> and so what they did was they rebuilt it uh, again, and that lasted until, uh, until the end in any case. Um, each of these parks were vying for something that nobody else had. And uh, one of the things they did at Rocky Point, especially at Fourth of July, they had these bonfires. I think people were firebugs back in those days. They really enjoyed, <laughs> well, you know what, think about it. What's popular today? Fire pits, right? And so people liked fires, but not quite so big. In 1949 at Rocky Point, uh, they had a giant bonfire. They burnt 29 trolley cars, wooden trolley cars, soaked them with gasoline, and burnt them. And of course, it was, they piled them up 75 feet high. And so that was a big attraction. People would sit there, eat popcorn or whatever, and watch them burn up. When you were done, all of the iron pots were left. You would just sell the iron for, uh, for scrap metal. Um, by the 1950s, they had a couple of dozen rides. They did expand in the, eight, in the 19, very early in 1970. And um, they added more rides, and they went out of business in the 1990s. What I would call Rocky Point the queen of the parks, I think. There's the chutes in the upper left, okay, which is a water ride. If you go to Canopy Lake, you get wet if you're in the ride, and if you get wet if you watch the ride, because it makes a tremendous splash and I don't mean just getting a little bit of water on you. You get really soaked. The steamboat you see in the upper right, every fraternal organization and church group probably during the summer had an excursion to Rocky Point Park. You get the boat ride, you spent the day in the park, the boat ride back. On the, the lower left is the first dance hall that they had. Dance halls were part of just about every park. Ballroom dancing was really popular before Dancing with the Stars. Everybody went ballroom dancing. And so you can see this on the lower right, this is uh, lower left rather, this, this uh, <clears throat> postcard probably goes back to around the turn of the century, maybe a little bit later. And you can see the people going, coming off the, the steamboat here. And again, a couple more shots. You can see the people, uh, <clears throat> lower left, the gentlemen, everybody dressed up. You went to the parks. Ladies had long dresses on, gentlemen in suits and ties, gentlemen in their straw hats. I used to correspond one time with uh, a fellow who was the, the band leader on the Ringman band, and I sent him a Christmas card, and at Christmas time, he would, um, 
he would send me a card, and on the card he'd say Fall River, because he'd look at the postmark and say, that's where we broke out our straw hats. And generally it was Memorial Day. So the gentleman would wear straw hats. I can still remember my dad wearing a straw hat, but he was one of the last of the straw hat, straw hat wearers. Okay. The Shore Dining Hall, this was the last one, lower left. Look at the size of that. Anyone remember what kind of chowder they served there? Red. Red, sure. It was more like Blount's red chowder, more like a Manhattan chowder and clam cakes. But this dining hall would be filled and refilled at the height of the season. So this was, there was plenty of money to be had. The Palladium, again, all of the, the amusement parks had dance halls and they competed with for how fancy they could be, really. And again, another, I think we saw the shot in the upper left, people coming off the, the uh, steamboat. And then um, Rocky Point went into disrepair. Eventually, you saw this was the entrance gate over here, and it's blocked off. But they have saved part of the land, and part of it is a, a, it's just a pot now that you can go down and you can sit and watch the ocean. They did have um, uh, places to swim down at, uh, <coughs> down, <coughs> excuse me, at Rocky Point. Again, going out of business in, in the uh, 1990s. Crescent Park, Crescent Park is a really nice park. It was in East Providence, not too far away. You could get there by, um, I don't think it was a direct ride from Far River, but you could get there for, uh, there were trolley service. The trolley really, trolleys really opened up these parks. I mean, if no one had a car, how are you gonna to get to the park? Well, the trolleys, once the trolley lines were established, in some cases, we have what's called a trolley park that was actually open and run by the trolley company itself to get business on a Sunday. But most all of these parks, you had to have some way of getting there, and the trolleys were the way they got most of the people there. And of course, at Rocky Point, Crescent Park, you had also, we get steamboats that would come in. On the left is a, a poster that was done uh, of the carousel, which is probably the, the, the greatest carousel, certainly in New England, and one of the top carousels uh, in America, really, by, by Louvre. Again, you can see they also had access uh, to the park by ship. Now, what happened was the, 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 a man named George Boyden was the man who built the original Cre Crescent Park, and he sold it to George Louvre. George Louvre was a carousel maker. He had a shop and they made and they <clears throat> and he produced carousels. And he bought the park, and this is the fourth and fifth of July. And again, the, the fifth is on a Monday. And look what's going on here. Shaw Dennis dancing on Monday, not on Sunday. You couldn't dance on Sundays. Okay? <laughs> that law is still held up. Okay? <laughs> Greatest midway of all. They had an aquarium. A ten in one was a sideshow. They had the whip, they had a museum, the coal mine was a dock ride, they had other amusements which they list fireworks and band concerts. The American band still exists, by the way. It's a great band that they give free concerts around in the summertime. Uh, the closest one is over in Portsmouth at the uh, Glen Farm sometime in July. And uh, it's, a worth, it's a good take in and it's free. And they had the best beach on Narragansett Bay, so they say. Okay, the midway in the upper right. Uh, to the left, you can see this is 1890, people coming in, looks like uh, on a pier. And there's Luce Carousel. Luce Carousel had 66 animals on it, all different. It was his catalog. Every horse, they weren't all, most of them were horses, but every horse was different. So if you wanted to buy a carousel, you went down to Crescent Park, you went and say, I want this, I want this, I want this, and then he would carve you those animals and build you your carousel. He actually moved his shop to the park, and then later on moved it over the, out to California, and his relatives ran the park for a number of years after that. We have the lower left-hand picture. Stephanie said she really wanted to have her picture taken in one of those boats. You and somewhere in your collection of old pictures, you must have a picture of somebody sitting in one of those uh, those kind of old boats, and uh, this was a big thing for a lot of people. This wasn't a cruise that they went on, and 
people taking your picture with the background of some fancy place. In this particular case, it was a fake boat with fake water. <laughs> and then you brought that home and you showed your friends that you actually got to sit to an amusement park. Big advertisement. The lower left is the, the building. By the way, the carousel still exists. It's still at the old Crescent Park. It's not a Crescent Park anymore, of course, but the carousel is still there. The group has saved the carousel, and so it's worth the trip down to see it. It's a four abreast carousel. The, 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 the outside animals are all stationary. They're standards, and the, the inner three rows are uh, uh, prances. They go they up and down. And so it's still a magnificent piece of, of folk art. And again, what do you got? You got the shoots again. The shoots were very popular. Certainly this lady here got rid of her boyfriend because she didn't want to miss a ride on the shoots. Not all of the animals were horses on the, on the carousel. You can see the, you got the camel here. And you can see the boat coming down the chutes. And this looks like, this operator would look like two. And I don't know if it was one pull, going up one way and coming down the other. Oh, they're actually operating two. My guess is they're going up one, turning around and coming back down. The bamboo slide, they have one of those at Canopy Lake. Very simple ride. You walk up, you, you sit on the slide, you slide down. Gravity pulls you down. There's no, no motors or anything to make it work. And so the profits here are pretty good. And the loose family? Oh, I, I don't know who the family is over here, whether they're loose or what. I think they're just a, probably a bunch of people who are enjoying the park. The Alhambra Ballroom was one of the nicest ballrooms that they had. And somewhere along the line, they had picked up some, some uh, <coughs> chandeliers from some place that went bankrupt. And they had these red, kind of red shades on them, so it was a little bit gaudy. But that was the whole idea, is to make your your dance hall a little bit better than, than what the other people had. And again, in the upper right-hand corner, most of these parks started a lot more as picnic groves than anything else, and then you started add, adding rides and things. Their carousel was called the Zephyr. And in the 38 hurricane, took out the carousel at Portsmouth Park, at Newport Beach, at Rocky Point, and the only carousel that survived was Crescent Park. They ran their carousel to about 1960, uh, not carousel, I should say, the roller coaster. They ran their roller coaster here until about 1960, and then finally, um, with lawsuits, they, they had breakdowns, uh, and I think they were afraid of running the thing. It just was very expensive to maintain, and so they decided to give it up. They had short dining hall in the lower right, not nowhere near as large as the one at Rocky Point, but still quite substantial. What's kind of interesting is, this was a very a, a favorite park of many people. The uh, Feline's apartment store, remember Feline's from Boston? They would run an outing every year to an amusement park. And so their employees association would go around and see what, um, how all of these parks were. And they eventually voted Crescent Park the best of all because there was so much to do. And so from that point on, Feline's would have their summer uh, <clears throat> outing at Crescent Park. Lincoln Park is, is sort of our park. You can see, lasted over 100 years. Started off in 1884, not, uh, excuse me, 1894, not 1884. In 1886, the Union Street Railway purchased land halfway between New Bedford and Fall River. This is a true trolley park now. They did that because you know, the work week in those days was five and a half days. Sundays, nobody rode the trolleys, so they would decided, let's create something that's going to get some business for us. So they bought some land halfway between Lincoln Park and, excuse me, between Fall River and New Bedford. And they called it Midway Park. That was its first name. Then the next thing that they did was uh, they changed the name. Somebody said, hey, it's in Westport. Oh, we'll call it Westport Park. Then they had a naming contest. And Lincoln Park, that's how it got its name. I find very often in naming contests, somebody already knows what they want, everybody <laughs> submits it, and then they just pick the one that they like. And so it became Lincoln Park. And you can see the map over here. Uh, if you recall, the trolleys would come along here. It says to Fall River, and you, uh, buses would come in in my day. 
And then when you get off, you pass the roller rink, the bowling alleys, the arcade was at an angle, if you recall. Right in the front of the arcade, there was a fortune teller, mechanical fortune teller, if you remember. You put a penny in, and her head moved, and her eyes moved, and a little card came out and told you your fortune. And of course, the rockets that you see here. The dance hall was over here in the corner. It was called a million dollar dance hall. I mean, it didn't look like a million dollars to me, but it, it, certainly, uh, it served the purpose. I, I should tell you, uh, dancing, the, the dance halls in all of these parks were primarily stag events, okay? They were single girls and single guys who went there to meet single guys and single girls, okay? And it was, it was kind of interesting. Uh, there were couples there. The couples at Lincoln Pike, I, I can recall if you ever went dancing there, the stage was in the middle, you faced the stage. The couples would go down to the far end on the right where there were settees and it was kind of dark down there. Nobody else went there because there was no one, not no one there. Okay, so that would be all of the couples. All of the single people would stand opposite the bandstand. The men in the back, the ladies in the front. And you would go up and of course tap a girl on the shoulder and ask her to dance. And uh, I always found that to be a little bit <coughs> frustrating, carrying on a conversation with somebody you didn't know too well. And I can recall I went there one time and I asked the girl to dance. And so what do you say? First thing you say is, uh, where are you from? She said, New Bedford. Oh, the girl's always from New Bedford, it seemed. Uh, <laughs> and if you lived in Fall River and you got there on a bus, that was not too good. But in any case, so they always came from New Bedford. And I can remember, so then the next thing, you never asked the girl her name. That was, you had to dance four or five times to get somebody's name. Uh, what do you do? Well, well I'm, I'm a senior at Sacred Heart Academy, or I work at Lewis Hand, or something like that. After that, I was all out of things to talk about. So I had this brainstorm. I'd ask it for the time. So I said, do you have the time? And she said, I sure do. And so obviously, I think that she had not made her plans for the summer. <laughs> And, uh, but she was looking to, in any case. And so, come to think of it, I think most of the people there uh, were single, and none of them had made plans for the summer. That's why they were all at Lincoln Park dancing. But it was a great place to go. It was fairly inexpensive. Uh, you could meet a lot of people, and even if you didn't dance, and that happened a lot, you always met a lot of friends, and it was a social thing as much as anything else. The gal never did give me the time, by the way. <laughs> Uh, Lincoln Park, of course, uh, uh, another fond memory I have is my mom and dad would take me to the Lincoln Park once a year. And uh, <clears throat> we'd take the bus up, and we were on the, the carousel, I recall. And my mom said, uh, they started talking, there were some sailors there from Newport. My dad started to talk to the sailors, actually, and he told them that he had a son who was in the Army. And, so the, the ride ended, and the sailor said, don't get off. And he, ran, he went and got a ticket and said, stay on. We'll give you another ride. And then there was a three or four of them, and each one took a turn going and getting another ticket. Well, by the time I had been on four or five times on the, on the, on the carousel, I was ready to get off. And one of the sailors said, come with me. And we went over. Remember they had all of those um, games of chance? You know, they spin the wheel, and you could win cigarettes. One, you could actually win groceries, is what, what it was, which didn't seem to be in a, 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 anything that would tempt me. But he took me over to the novelty <laughs> stand, and he, he took, there were 20 numbers, and he put a nickel on every single number. And of course, I won. And I can remember, I chose this rather ugly looking, it was a carved coconut. And it, it was a rather large nose, and it had uh, shells for teeth and shells for eyes and a little leatherette strap to carry it around. And that's what I chose. And you know, I had that until I went in the service, believe it or not. We lived in a house where we had an attic, and my dad moved while I was, uh, was uh, while I was someplace in any case. And when I came back, we were in another house, and he left everything there, including my coconut and all of the family pictures. And so we ended up with, with and it was too late to go back after I realized that everything was still back, back there. That was probably 
long gone. Uh, Lincoln Park did not get a coaster until 1946, right after the war. In these pictures here, you see they're advertising 40 rides for $1.75 all day. So you could have a good time. We would bring our kids uh, later on, and I would just copy what my dad did. We'd bring them just before school went back. We'd all go, buy a ride all day ticket. They'd ride all of the rides. We'd go and get something to eat, come back at night, and ride them all again. That was their, one of their outings for the summer. And you, remember, you might remember the, the, the sign here, and of course they had bowling, skating, and dancing, so they were open um, year round. The carousel here is the second carousel at the park, and this is a Philadelphia toboggan company, and of course it's the carousel that's down at the waterfront today. Another magnificent machine by a, good, uh, by a great company. And in the, uh, the right hand, uh, and I, <clears throat> this was picked up by a group of four of our citizens back, I don't know now, a long time ago, I can't remember exactly when. But the way they auction off a carousel, by the way, is they auction off each individual horse. And then at the end of that, they add, they add up the prices for all the horses at a premium. And if you want the whole thing, this is what you pay. And Forward was the only bidder on it, and they got it on the second bid. They finally raised it enough so that the, the company that had the carousel decided that they would sell at that price. So good for us in, in any case. And they spent some good money, and they had a real carousel company do the refurbishing on this. Uh, some of these have been really badly mangled by people doing them themselves. You just got to get people, real artists and woodcarvers that know what they're doing. Uh, on the lower right hand corner is where you waited for your trolley in the earlier days and buses. And uh, I don't remember that being there when the buses were there. No, we, I thought we just, got, the buses just pulled up along the curb and you just got off. Jack Kennedy in the upper left hand corner. I don't know what the cake is for. Does anyone, any idea? And that was taken in the, um, that looks like that was probably in, the, they had a pavilion there where they, um, they had free acts and things, and, and also I think where they served the clam cakes and that sort of stuff. And on the right hand side, that looks like more like the, probably in the 50s or so. And then an aerial view. Okay. <clears throat> they didn't waste time. Some places had the Comet, some places had the Zephyr. They just called their roller coaster the Costa. So it made it easy, okay? And that ran and, uh, for, for some time. And again, they had problems with it as well. Again, it was just an expensive thing to maintain after a while. The Kitty Ride, the train that went around Kitty Land, if you recall, it was a miniature golf course there. Another view of the uh, Philadelphia Toboggan Company uh, carousel, and then another sort of a Probably a view taken from the uh, an aerial view again on the left. There are some great, um, if you go to YouTube, you can dial up some, some video uh, from Lincoln Park that looks like it was taken back in the 50s or so. And I remember just the, the week and two before school, I would have all these school groups come in. And there's some great sh shots of Catholic schools with the nuns and all of their regalia uh, riding on the, uh, <laughs> on the various rides, and the nuns seem to be having the greatest time of all. Riding the lower ride here, lower left, is a ride in the dock, which, is, as I recall, wasn't anything too very spectacular. And this was at the end. The, the, the carousel, that I keep calling the carousel, excuse me, the roller coaster simply just was stayed there and it was just a skeleton and pieces were falling off and they finally took it down and it's all houses there now if you've been by there. Vanity Fair, anyone ever hear of this amusement park? Vanity Fair, it's in East Providence. Uh, okay, if you know where, you know where the oil tank farm is off the Wampanoag Drive? Standard Oil? That is where, the, where that, this used to be. And you can see, this was, it was open before it was really finished. And this park, its feature was it had a lot of live acts. It had a rodeo. It had this 
what they call fighting the flame shell, as you see on the left. They actually had a sort of a street built with brick buildings. And then what they did was they set fires inside the buildings. It were just barrels and things, so there was flames and smoke. And you notice here, these are uh, steam, pump, uh, steam engines come in, and then they would put water on the fire. They put up a ladder. The fireman would go to the top floor and carry someone down on his shoulder. Uh, then eventually they, they would put out a net, and people would jump off the top of the building into the net. And that's what, th what seemed to entertain people in those days. As they said, they, they had a, <laughs> you'll see in a minute, we actually have a video of one taken at Luna Park, but we'll, we'll, we'll finish this in, in, in any case. The, the park had a rel relatively short life, as I said. It opened in 1907 on Memorial Day. There were about 25,000 people at the park, including Forer's mayor. Okay? It, he ended up getting a free, uh, free ticket to the park. It looked like the park was going to be successful. Uh, as I said, they had a, a, a permanent Wild West show with real Indians from the West, which was an attraction. Because once you've seen them once, what do you do for an encore, OK? They still look the same the next time you see them. So it was, it was a, a, a thing that attracted people in for one event, but people weren't going to come back and, and simply uh, do it again. But in any case, uh, in 1910, they filed for bankruptcy. In 1912, they had a fire. Fire was a big thing with the amusement parks. In this particular case, you can see them setting a building on fire. Of course, there's nothing in here to really burn. But the rides themselves were filled with oil and that sort of thing. And once they got going, uh, you know, they would burn fairly easily. And, uh, and again, there were the chutes, and they're shooting the chutes at the dock on the right with all lit up. And you can see it is an attractive thing. They never had a roller coaster. And you can see the gentleman here on the lower left there. It looks like they're maintaining that. They had a lot of free shows. Uh, they had a, up, upper left is a circus. And the park was very attractive. It was, uh, but again, it was unfinished. And the cost of finishing the thing they found was just prohibitive. They just couldn't meet it. 1910, again, they went bankrupt. 1912, they had a fire. 1950, they sold it to Standard Oil. And that was the end of Vanity Fair. The people who lived in the neighborhood had this little saying. They said, Vanity Fair, Vanity Fair. Everything's open and nobody's there. Yeah. <laughs> okay, next. That's a new slide. Oh, OK. A dance hall, upper left. Dance halls were big everywhere, OK? Dancing was a big thing. Everybody went dancing. And again, the, the, the shoots, that seems to be the big thing in this park, since they didn't have a roller coaster. Uh, where did you say that was? It was in East Providence, where on the, Wamp where the Wampanoag Trail is, I believe. There's, there's an, a, there's, I think there's a, a golf course on one side of the street. And on the other side, you'll see some oil storage tanks. And uh, that, that's where it was. And this was done in Ludum Park. This is 1907, so this is just about what the same time that they were doing this over at Vanity Fair. And you can see the there goes the lattice. Look at the fireman on the up far right. Watch, them, watch those guys climb those ladders. This is this is Luna Park, by the way. And you'll see one guy go up here. You've got to look at it. It's not very clear, but you'll see somebody grab somebody and carry him down on a ladder. You'll notice that bringing the net out of the side here, they're going to set up this net so, that the, the, so people can escape from the fire. Now, the people that are escaping are obviously acrobats, because of this ordinary citizens. Watch how they bounce into the net and out of the net. Ordinary citizens would probably break their necks in most cases. And again, you notice the, up here, there's firemen. Got the lady out of the. <laughs> but watch how they get out of the net. If you've seen a, a, high, a flying net, they roll out of the net, OK? So these weren't just ordinary citizens or actors. These were professionals. <laughs> Hard way to make a living, you're right. And then, of course, they start to put, there goes somebody else buying. 
and then they start spraying the water on the fire. And watch what happens at the end of this, which I thought was, was is kind of funny, is as you get near the end, look to the left of the screen. And they've saved everybody now, so everybody, it's all set. You can just put water on the fire. And the show is over. I don't know how many times a day they would do this, probably at least once, once maybe twice. But again, once you saw the show, I mean, the second time, it's going to look the same thing. Now there's a curtain that comes out, <laughs> which they pull across. Because you can look over the top. So this was at Luna Park, 1907, the same time that, that our friends at Vanity Fair had it. Vanity Fair probably bought the, that whole setup from another amusement park that had sold stuff off, and that's where they think they got the stuff. One of the reasons they went out of business was they had too many live people to pay. They had too many salaries. It was all live acts. Rides, don't, you need one guy to run the ride and a little bit of electricity. But in this case, you're going to pay all of those people. Even if you didn't pay them enough, you get 15 to 20 people. It adds up. And here's another small park, Krishnan Park. And this lasted fairly, 1916 to 1955. It was in New Bedford. And it was down by where Fort Rodman is today. That opened in 1916, again, with about 25,000 people in attendance. Uh, it had a ballroom. It had a roller coaster. It had 15 acres. Uh, uh, on 15 acres, it had a beach, about seven, 800 feet of beach. And so it had the beach as an attraction as well. Now, the roller coaster, of course, what happened in 38, it took the roller coaster out. So they also had the fires. In, in 1932, they had a fire. They, uh, <laughs> 38, they had a hurricane. One of the ways they had of trying to bring people in was dance-a-thorns or walk-a-thorns. And this was kind of a, it borders on being cruel, I think. <laughs> Okay? I mean, this was the Depression. People had no money. So some couple would get together and they would practice a bit. And this wasn't how fancy you could dance. This was how long you could stand up. So they would, they would dance for 15 minutes and then they'd break. But then after a while, that adds up. You, 45 minutes of dancing. So they, they, they had these techniques. You notice the guy is sleeping on his hand. How to keep his feet moving, however. And if you fell down, of course, you were disqualified. And, but what gets me is not so much the dances, but the couple who are watching them. Why would anyone pay money to go watch people suffer? <laughs> Probably because you had a chance to look at somebody who was in worse shape than you were, OK? <laughs> and I think that was the reason that they got there. But in one case, they had one of these walkathons, thorns, and I don't know when it started, but it, it ran so long that it ran over into Sunday, and they get fined $50 for, for dancing on a Sunday. <laughs> so, and again, they might get a, I don't know what the prize was, a $50, $100. But during the Depression, there were people that you know, were quite desperate, and uh, an extra 100 bucks or $50 would have been a big thing for somebody uh, that didn't have it. One of the newspapers said that these walkathons were human dignity at ebb tide, is what they said. <laughs> and it pretty much, I mean, I just can't imagine what would attract people to, to something like this. As I said, 38, they, they, had a, they had a fire in 32, a hurricane in 38. They had another fire in 52. And the hurricane finished them off in 54. And that was. Uh, pretty much the end of a Krishnit pot. They made a movie about that, remember? They shoot horses, don't they? They shoot horses, don't they? Right, yes. Yeah. And then uh, Stephanie was asking what Chris Betts were, and I have no idea. Uh, Krishnit Park, th th that's the marquee, at the greeting you as you come in. They had a whip. Everybody had a whip, it seemed. That was a, you remember the whip at Lincoln Park? It was a, and of course, they had a roller coaster. And some color slides. The upper right is the trolley that ran from downtown New Bedford out to the park. 
that was about a 20 minute ride. So if you were going from Fall River, you'd take the, tr the trolley to New Bedford downtown, and then you'd switch over to that car that went out to the, uh, the park. They had a beach, about seven, 800 feet of beach, so that wasn't bad, and the, the beach, I think, still exists uh, down in that area. And again, uh, the, the lower pictures, these were after the 54 hurricane, which pretty much finished them off. What happened was most of these parks just never had the, the, the funds. You remember Disney started to come in at the end of the, uh, the, the 20th century there, and with all of this fancy stuff, and these parks really couldn't compete in, in any case. They were just barely making it. Remember, they had to make all of their money for the most part between April and the 1st of October. The only income they would have would be from the dance hall or if they had roller skating, bowling, there was, there was some money there. But not enough to keep the park going uh, uh, all the time. Sandy Beach, this is a, a really small park by the way, but it was in Fall River down by the sewage treatment plant. And this is a park that I went to other than Lincoln Park. Uh, and I can remember going down there to swim. And I always thought that the, it was, um, the name Sandy Beach was deceiving. Because I always found it to be on the rocky side. Um, but if you call it Rocky Beach, nobody will come. Uh, and so it started off, a guy named Alvaro Dubois, or Dubois in Florida, when we anglicize it was the guy who bought a hotel down in here. And the idea was this was going to be a, uh, an attraction. People would come stay in a hotel, swim at the beach. Then he started to add different things, a carousel. Um, he had a, the, the, uh, you know, the jungle gem so that, that to attract the, the teenagers and the younger people, and they would climb on that. And again, you see the beach. And if you look where, the, where it and the water's edge, you'll see it's pretty rocky there. The, the sand was back, and I'm going to guess that they put a lot of that, probably carried some of that sand and put it in. Notice the bathing suits on the men in the lower left, OK? OK, Puritanism was still in, OK? Men wore tops at, to their, when they went swimming. And so in this particular case, uh, again, they were quite modest. And I can remember my brother played basketball for Notre Dame, the church. And he didn't hand in his basketball jersey. And so my father would use it to swim. So my father's coming out of the water one day, and my, my dad looks up, and, and this kid's watching him, and the kid said, hey, mister, did you just swim from Notre Dame? <laughs> and my father said, yes. And the kid turned around and said, yelled to his mother, hey, Ma, this guy just swam all the way from Notre Dame. <laughs> We do have this, what's left of the, the horse and the carousel of the Historical Society. The, the 38 hurricane took up the, just about everything in the park. And even the, even the carousel was completely wrecked. The roller coaster was wrecked. And again, the pictures at the bottom were after the 38 hurricane. In the upper right, you can see on a, on a fairly busy day, they had bathhouses here. There were a, a few things. Uh, the, the roller coaster was the attraction in any case. And some more views. I think in the upper right, there's a rather large crowd there. And I think what this was, there was one of these people had a seaplane. It was a seaplane demonstration. And they used to, what they would do is the seaplane would race a motorboat. They would give the, the, the motorboat a, a, a head start, and then the seaplane would come, of course, and easily overtake it and win the race. Uh, but uh, it, it drew a rather large crowd because seeing a plane up that close was an unusual thing. Now, a lot of these pictures came from, the, I believe, were donated to the Historical Society by the, the uh, Dubois family. The carousel, they, they had a Stein and Goldstein carousel, which Alvaro actually built the carousel himself. And I think we have a picture of it. And it's pretty rough looking. It looks like he bought a lot of individual horses and just kind of stuck them on. But then he went to a, a, one of the better companies, Stein and Goldstein, and got a, a, the carousel, a, a, you know, a formal carousel. If you go down to Heritage Park at uh, the Heritage Plantation in Sandwich, they got a carousel there. And they used to claim that that carousel was once at Sandy Beach. But I don't know if that's true or not. I, mean, I kind of doubt it, but whatever. Records get lost, and it's 
doesn't really make a whole lot of difference, I guess, in the end. I don't know who the character is in the lower right there. Listen, look like he comes from, uh, from, up, from Fall River in any case. And again, these are very old pictures, as you can see. They had some ordinary swings and that sort of thing. Seesaws, uh, that was that sort of some fairly informal place. Everybody's dressed up? Yeah. And there's Alvaro in the lower right, and he's the guy who thought up all of these things. You gotta give the guy a lot of credit. I mean, he did this with, I don't think, a whole lot of money. In 1932, um, excuse me, in 1930, the dance hall caught fire, and it fire spread to other buildings. And the management of the park blamed the railroad. They said that a hot coal or something had been, came come off, off the engine and it set the fire. They did collect, according to what I've read, about $40,000 in damages. They partially restored the park the next year. Then the 38 hurricane came. And like everything else, the 38 hurricane ended a lot of these parks. As I said, they just never had the money to put them back together again. And again, th that carousel on the left is obviously professionally made. That's not Alvaro's homemade job. Okay. Forest Hills Garden was at the other end of Fall River, down by where St. Vincent's home used to be on North Main Street. Had a very short life. Very short life. 1881. It says 1885, but actually it didn't get that far. It got to 1883. Uh, it was sold in 1885. There are no photographs, of course. Uh, we don't have any photographs of it, but there are these line drawings. Um, the land was purchased. There was a hotel there. The land was purchased by a group of gentlemen. They, they rented the land to an individual who actually um, put up a, a dance hall, a Shaw dinner hall. Uh, it, was used to, it was originally called Ashley's Grove. And so it was more, there were no rides here uh, at the, uh, again. Uh, you can see in the, the lower right is, I believe, the, the, the dining hall. They had stables and you could rent a horse. The, the pond that you see here was a saltwater pond. And the saltwater pond uh, was only three feet deep. And my guess is they pumped water into that pond. It wasn't a tidal pond, I don't think. They simply pumped water into the pond. But when you look at the upper left, it looks like a pretty neat place. Where was that? There was where the uh, St. Vincent's home used to be on North Main Street, which is still open land, by the way. Okay, I, I think that the uh, LNG was going to go down in that particular area. The land is all contaminated. Uh, I knew a guy that worked at Shell Oil, and he said we had we would have tanks, and nobody t would take anything out of the tank, and then they'd be down a certain amount. Well, where was all of that stuff going? Well, it was, it was dripping out of those tanks into the ground. George so, Mellon is that where George Mellon? George Mellon, the guy that yeah, had Mellon the Hotel. Mellon Hotel. Mellon Hotel. He's the one who started Forest Hill Park. That's good. He left the trolley company for Gold Street Railway. That was his endeavor. That was his endeavor, and, the, and there was a trolley line that went down, so you could get there. Um, you can, I, I remember as a kid, I don't, this was well, way before my time, but I can remember going swimming at Lanigan's Beach and Bliffin's Beach, and we would you could take the bus down there to the north end of the city, or you could take, to get to the south end of the city, we, I lived in the Flint, you had to go down to the Granite Block, change buses, take the Bay Street, and go to the end of the line. And again, they had a, they had a skating rink. The guy lost so much money in 1881, uh, that the owners of the land took it back. They tried to make a go of it in 1882 and 1883, and they found out that uh, it just wasn't going to go. I don't think simply there was enough money in the city. Again, uh, you know, most people worked in the mills. I, I, we, I talked to Phil about vacations in those times, in the good old summertime. Everybody looked forward to the summer. Uh, I can remember when most of the shops in Fall River, they got, I think, two weeks vacation, and it was the first two weeks of July. Before that, it was a one-week vacation. And before that, you got a one-week vacation with no pay. So you to survive that week, uh, the, the lady of the house would have to 
make sure she had enough money to last her through that week. And my father would tell me, his, his mother would try to save a few pennies each week, put them aside, so that maybe, just maybe in the summertime, they might be able to go down to Sandy Beach for a day. But that didn't happen very often. Yes? You had mentioned that you, uh, there were no clothes uh, of uh, four sills. I do have a good of the, the old hotel. Do you? Yeah. yeah. It's in that room right there. Oh, OK. So yeah. Good, thank you. Yeah, they had a hotel, at, and again, that was the idea. Coming, stay at the hotel, and then they, you could go horseback riding, you could dance, you could bowl, you could skate, you could rent a boat and row it, and it just, there weren't enough people around with, with funds to, to, to sustain that kind of a business, at least not at that particular time. They had a bicycle track. Too. They had a bicycle track? Yeah. That was, which was very popular. No, and, and again, people just never had the coins in their pocket. You know, the average guy who worked in a mill couldn't afford any of those things. Uh, there was very little middle class in those days. I will just say before I'm signing off here, there's a, um, uh, there were other parks. There was Dighton Rock Park, uh, which was where the, there's a Dighton Rock Park today. That was on the other side of the river, however, and that was a trolley park. That was built by the tro uh, a trolley company. Um, there was uh, Portsmouth Park, which was Island Park. Today they had a roller coaster there. You could, ask, uh, uh, you could get there from Fall River by taking the train, getting off in Portsmouth and walking down to the beach. There was also a, a, a small park at uh, Easton's Beach in Newport. It was called Newport Beach. They had a roller coaster again, carousel. Of course, they had the, the beach. And a uh, very busy place. You could take the train from Fall River to Newport and then the trolley out to the beach. So those were real, very small parks, however. And in almost every case, the 38 hurricane just finished them up. Perhaps just in finishing up, I was, I was just looking through and, and picked up this little poem. Uh, a man named Will Heck, who wrote for the Billboard. Billboard is like the trade publication for the outdoor amusement business. Uh, still in business, by the way. And he wrote this poem, which I thought uh, kind of fits the, 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 the theme here. He says, of all days past, we best remember the gay glad days between May and September, when the sun shone bright and the sky was blue, and each afternoon when our work was through, we took our sweethearts for a trolley ride to the summer park by the riverside, where we whiled away the evening hours, mid the birds and music and the fragrant flowers, and then neat the heavens studded with stars, sped back to the city on the traction cars. And at their doors, with a parting kiss, we said goodnight to our girls. What bliss. <laughs> <laughs> and simpler times, but I'm not so sure that they went better times in some ways. Again, uh, you can imagine people living in those days, looking forward to that summer, to going on an excursion to Rocky Point, or going to Lincoln Park. And I remember how excited we were when, when we were kids to, to, uh, to go to, just to go to Lincoln Park. And so it was a, a different time. The, the park simply could not survive. At their peak, there were 1,500 amusement parks in America. And by one by one, they just simply faded, simply because they couldn't keep up. Disney came along and really kind of created parks with, with, with attractions that they could not match. And when you think back to some of the parks, they were just simply simple areas. But you could afford these parks. Okay, and you have to sort of take a home equity loan if you want to go to Disney now. And you're going to, it's going to cost you several thousand dollars to get down here and back. So basically, if you have some questions, fine. Uh, but um, thank you for your attention. I hope you enjoyed it. This question. Hello, sorry, Boyan. It's relating to Lincoln Park. Uh, my class picnic in 1958. We rode the Comet coaster. We all got on it. It got stuck on the first hill. We had to get out and push it. <laughs> oh. I rode that coaster another 50 times and never got stuck. Oh. But I just thought I'd add it. Yes, sir. Uh, one of the things that helped out was uh, Lincoln Park, why it was one that did, is that they had, um, they brought in many shows, like performance with the form of the old Highway Casino, 
they were doing this small performances at the end of Spear Park and Broadway, Hollywood stars, they would come in, they perform either in the Million Dollar Ballroom or the summer concerts. But also, very big attractions there uh, did very well at bowling leagues. The bowling alley went completely through, and the skating rink was open every single day. Yeah. They shared it 65 days a year. I know a lot of people that were into skating, yeah. They had, and they had, we had one of the best skating clubs in the country. Roller or ice? Roller. Roller. Yeah, roller. Yeah, roller skating. That was always a busy place. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. They didn't have skating rinks that I know of. No. No. Lincoln Park had more. So Lincoln Park had more ways to make money in the winter time, and they did bring in big bands, like Vaughn Monroe. Frankie Carl and, and, and big, those are the bands, you know, the big band music now, not John Philip Sousa. But they did have free acts, but they weren't overloaded like Vanity Fair, where they just had a payroll that was so high that they just couldn't make it. And so, uh, but Lincoln Park was well run for a long time. That was one of the last things in 84, yeah. I think the, the whole park closed about 87. They had a fire like that. There, and they had another fire, and that closed the whole thing down. And, and another thing that happened at Lincoln Park was that they were starting to get a lot of teenage gangs. Teenagers were hanging around, and eventually they would have a fight, and of course they would call it a riot or something. It really wasn't. But there would be, and then what happened was people would say, well, I'm not going to let my kids go there. And, and all of that stuff just added up. But I think no matter what you did, like a lot of things, it just wasn't going to last. It was, it was, it's time was up. It's just time was up, that was all. And you, you just can't compete uh, uh, with, uh, you know, going to Lincoln Park once a year. The, the idea they, they wanted you to do is go often. And, and again, uh, but it was, a, it was an interesting place, and so we all had fun there. No parking, right. I think I saw they had, they had parking for 6,000 cars and the parking was free. Things were relatively cheap. I think going dancing on a Saturday night might have been 250 or something like that. So it was all affordable. It was all things that, you know, it was things that you could, uh, you didn't have to go and hawk for to take your family. You could, you could go and enjoy it and, and everything was at a reasonable price and for, you know, I think when we went, a little bit later on, it was, I forget what it was, $5 ride all day and night or something. You saw those little tickets, $1.75 to ride all day and night. And uh, they did exclude a couple of rides on it, some of the special rides. Well, I got another one, Andrew, Revere <laughs> Beach. Uh, they had a, a roller coaster called Black Lightning. Black Lightning. They were had a nurse and a doctor on call. It only lasted a year. It was so violent. And uh, actually, uh, uh, broken back. That's how violent. Rocky Point and Lizzie Board. Oh, yeah. Stephanie reminds me, we, you know, we talked about uh, all of these various groups would go out down to Rocky Point for their yearly excursions. And uh, in a couple, couple of weeks, Stephanie is going to be giving a talk on Lizzie Borden. And of course, the day of the murders, where was most of the Florida Police Department? At Rocky Point. It was their, annu it was their annual uh, visit to the park. Rocky Point also had a saltwater pool. Yes. And that was like a big thing to go there. Yeah, I don't, it, see, it always says saltwater pools always confuse me a bit, because now you got to go take a shower after you're done because you got all of that salt on you. You know, the fresh water was more refreshing. But in any case, uh, it was a fun time. And I'm, I think back, when you think back to the early part of the 20th century, I'm sure that everybody really enjoyed uh, going to the parks. It was a big part of everybody's life. I can tell you that Rocky Point saltwater pool, what uh, caused the demise of that? was it was so expensive to maintain the equipment because of the salt, so they had to close it. Yeah. And uh, one person actually died in the pool. Yeah. He did a, a dive, and he actually died in the pool. And after that, that was the demise yeah. of the pool. I'll tell you, one of my, I had a lot of good times at the pool. Like good part, too. One of my stories I still remember to this day. Salvation Army used to have, take a bunch of kids 
for a day, put them in buses, and take them. So we went, me, my sister, and my younger brother, we went. Of course they do, we little Dutch. So when we got home, my sister started singing. I may never march in the infantry, shoot the artillery. I'm in the Lord's army. My father was furious. <laughs> <laughs> no more going to that. Coming back with those Protestant songs. <laughs> I can, I can understand that, but at a time when, if you went, every section of the city had three churches, right? A, a Portuguese, a French, and an English, and never the twain shall meet. I mean, you'd walk 40 miles to go to, if you were French, to go to a French church, where the, where the, you could have go across the street to the Catholic uh, Irish church or English church, whatever it was. It was like three different, and so it would, it, when it came to being Catholics and Protestants, wow, that's even a bigger, a bigger spread, isn't it? <laughs> well, thank you very much for your attention, and I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Come back and see us two weeks. <laughs>